Now, he is an England rugby legend, a jungle survivor, and a royal husband tackling the nation this winter with a live tour of his hit podcast, The Good, The Bad and The Rugby. Well, as well as all of that, he'll soon be entering a prison with some of his fellow World Cup winning teammates to train up a team of inmates to take on one of England's most formidable sporting rivals, Australia. Mike Tyndall joins us now. I'm delighted to say good mm. morning for you. Good morning. No, I, I was a bit worried when I came in. It was quite serious. Then beer goggles sort of made, yeah. Me, feel, yeah. made me feel Did you want far to more comfortable in the, the environment I'm in. discussion along uh, that phrase. Say that again, sorry. <laughs> Did you want to contribute to the beer goggles? Oh, yeah, machine? look, we've all been there. I me mean, more than most, <laughs> most As likely. a rugby man, I mean, you like a few beers, I would have thought, in the passing year. Of course, yeah. uh, of course, uh, a little bit. We've, we've actually launched our own gin, so gin is now the, you know, yeah. it's a new way, it's a new yeah. way going. I'm not necessarily the biggest rugby fan, but I listen to your podcast because I think it's inclusive and you seem to have a good time. And I mean, I think this one um, is uh, going to end up in a massive live show. Yeah, it's, uh, the podcast is not really about the sport. It's about the people and the characters that play the sport and the stories that go through. Some are good, some are bad, you know, with anything in life, you have highs, you have lows and sport is no different. And we try and celebrate the differences between yeah. the players and their characters. Uh, we did a live tour uh, last year, which we didn't think we'd sell any tickets for, and right. actually we randomly sold quite a lot. And, but it was the, the people that came. It's amazing who goes to the theatre. People don't actually do any research sometimes, and someone will just go, oh, no, we bought tickets because we saw it was on. Yeah. And, it was, and then we, I wouldn't say we're the most PG podcast out there, some people turned up with their eight-year-olds and like, <laughs> earmuffs. Um, so, yeah, I think, you yeah, know, obviously with the Rugby World Cup uh, this year in France, it's the most open Rugby World Cup we've, we're going to. Yeah, can you help me with that? I might not be a rugby fan, but um, I know that England are pretty rubbish at the moment. I mean, their opening game is against Argentina. They lost to Fiji. They're it's the lowest they've ever been um, in the rankings. I mean, as an ex... But also, it is also the highest Fiji have ever been. Well, that's so, true. Good yeah. for them and, um, and all <laughs> yeah. that. I like the fact um, you're seeing the positive. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. But the, thing, the thing is, it's so easy now in sport to always be negative and And look, that England team, no one cares more about what they try and put on the field. I think we've got a great group of players. Have they found their mojo yet? Certainly not. But they're going into this World Cup now with no expectations. I think they will still be focusing on they have got a really easy side of the draw. If they beat Argentina, they're definitely in a quarter... Well, they should definitely be in a quarter-final, uh, which then you're in knockout rugby, and who knows what will happen. You know, 2007, England got smashed in the first game against South Africa, 35-0, I think it was, and then ended up in the final. And people will always talk about Mark Quater's foot in touch. So, right. look, you, we've got to be trying... The, the, now that you sit on the other side and you're just a fan, you go through the roller coaster of emotion that a fan goes through, but the the key job of every every fan is just to support them. They're going to try it as hard as they can. That you know, Steve Borthwick inherited uh, something he hasn't really controlled from Eddie Jones, and we've just got to trust that he can try and get them together. I think they're one performance away from riding a momentum uh, wave and changing things around and hopefully mm -hmm. hopefully we'll see that in, in France. You say obviously it's different for you now when you're watching it as a fan. I mean, how does it feel when you compare it to mm. what you felt back in 2003 when you were going through it and, you know, England won the World Cup? And, and do you kind of still get that feeling like, oh, I wish I was there, I wish I was playing? No, I think you will always miss the big occasions. You'll always miss playing in front of 80, 90,000 people. You will always miss being around 35 of your best friends uh, day in, day out. And, um, you know, all the... You know, that, going way back 20 years now, going back to that, we had such a good atmosphere on the pitch, off the pitch. Uh, you know, it's very rare to everything to sort of click in in how people work together, whether that be management, whether that be the players. And it was like the perfect storm that came together at the right time in that period, going in at number one, number one in the world. You know, you look at Ireland this year, how are they going to cope with going in, Grand Slam, uh, you know, they've won a test series in New Zealand and then they're going in as number mm. one. It's a lot of pressure. You would drop for the semi-final, weren't you? And you, you the best know, come on, we know it's now, I think it's well documented, it's now yeah. the best decision ever. Uh, ever. Yeah, maybe, but I mean, it was your sliding doors moment, because talking about beer goals, you're sitting there, one beer, and you met your, your future wife as a result of that, that, correct? That is very true, yes. So, but for being dropped, yeah. um, you not, might not be married to another great sportswoman. Yes, exactly, that's why we 
I keep telling Clive it was the best decision he ever made. So, uh, <laughs> How different things could have been. That yeah, must be you quite never know, do you? Back on it. you know, I, I, I don't actually try to think about it too much. <laughs> It'd be quite depressing, I think. You're talking about camaraderie and the difference between your team in 2003 and the one today. It really is about motivation and people working together. And, you know, I wonder uh, about that in this new programme um, that you've got, Grand Slammers. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, it was a, a pro project that was sort of brought to that and it was quite... It's put together quite late because, uh, you know, the Department of Justice getting clearance on people to be on TV and uh, getting people who are going to step forward. So the Mount Prison, which is where it's based, they have their own rugby team, which in, is, in itself is quite amazing. Obviously, no away games. They're all at home. Um, and it's quite intimidating for any team that goes through. You sort of go into the prison the first time and the amount of gates you have to go through, walking basically through the middle of all the wings, to get to the pitch and, and it's quite an intimidating uh, sort of atmosphere, especially the first time you go in, we, you sort of, by the end of the show, you're sort of used to what you can get and a bit of abuse out of a window and everything yeah. else like that. Um, but it's, the, it's what we tried to show is the power of what rugby can do and bring people together. We had 18 guys who never played together, weren't on the same wing, didn't necessarily know anyone's background, anyone else, mm -hmm. and try and teach them what it's like to be. Uh, to pull that together, create those bonds of friendship in terms of that you're going to play for it, and I, you actually have to care. With rugby, you have to care about the person to your left or your right. If you don't, you can't, you won't so go. So you'd be an advocate for sport being, you know, beneficial not just to your physical, but also mental health as well. Oh, com oh completely. Not just sitting around, sort of talking yeah. or internalising it. No, doing it, things is what matters. It, you would. But say. exercise is, all, is well documented on what it can do mentally for you. But then. Also, if you can, I think rugby is completely unique because you, you're only as good as, as the team. You know, yes, you can have a superstar in there, whether it be for like Jason Robinson, one of the best players I've ever played with, but he can't do it without the, the big fat guys up front who push and he, or he'll never get the ball. Yeah. So it's, um, it's, it is a unique sport. And to watch the journey that those guys went through, you know, yeah. you hope, you've hoped you've changed, you hope you've changed at least one of their paths in terms of when they come out and what they do and what how important they make. is it do you think from a young age i know you know your children are into their sport they obviously see both their parents mm. in a in a competitive way as well because of your backgrounds and what you do you know, how important do you think it is to instill that at a young age i think it, i think it's very important i think sport whether it whatever sport you do but you know i'm fo mainly focused on rugby the discipline that it instills in people the actual work ethic mm. uh wanting to li live a healthier lifestyle i think it it's massively important for the young, but also having that competition. And actually, I know that we're in a world where we, we should never talk about winning and losing. But... Just cool. I do wonder about that. I mean, you know, uh, your kids have got a, a mum who's got a, an Olympic medal, world champion. <laughs> more you're me a world way champion. more medals than me. Yeah, way more medals than you. Um, so you're even competitive between each other yeah. then, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, what's, what's the right balance? Also, I think your daughter's playing rugby as well. Yeah. Between sort of saying, you know, it's OK to lose on the one hand um, and the taking part matters and being, you know, one yeah. of those tiger parents. No, but no, it's getting the balance right, and, uh, and I don't think I'd ever be pushy. If you ever play anything, you have to play to win. That's just. But then, how you can react to not winning, then changes what you are as a person. You should never enjoy losing, but you've also got to be able to be, you know, take it and accept it and move on. You know, I remember when I first turned professional, I hated losing. If we lost, you wouldn't see me. I'd just be in a dark room in my uh, home. But then over the period of you're going to lose quite a few games in a, in a professional career, you then have to learn that it doesn't matter how you react there and then. You've just got to go away, have a look at what so went wrong. The big thing for it. mental health is, is learning from your losses, yeah. um, being part of a team and, and moving yeah, on. Right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Take, take the things out of it and, and move on and, and learn and get better. Could Good, you... bad and rugby. Where can I go and see it if I want to go and see it live? Oh, it's everywhere. everywhere. It's all around, lady, the, it's all around the UK. It's on, it's yeah. on Cuff and Taylor. And do you ever worry, because obviously, you know, being part of the royal family, do you worry you're thinking, oh, I'm telling this story and you get halfway through it and you think, oh, I'm not sure I should be telling this one? There's always pick your moments. <laughs> know your audience sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So people never know what they might learn about you in that well, case. I like, the, uh, the episode, I like the episode where you had Zara on. I'd advise anyone to, to, to watch it. I yeah. know. And she's at Burley this weekend. So good luck, my uh, love. Aww. Good luck, yeah. Good luck.